What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do something fun. Uh, this is my latest project here. This is a 1985 C4 Corvette. Yes, it is one of the most unloved Corvettes, but for us Corvette guys, us car guys, it is a great platform to do kind of anything to. And right now they're like a good car that you can snatch up. Decent price. Uh, there's a lot of automatic ones out of there. There's a handful of stick shift cars out there. But for anybody who is drifting, racing, uh, drag racing, street car, whatever, C4, awesome platform to start with. Uh, what I do with my car, it's more of a stance static lower car i just always thought that the c4 would look really good if it was just slammed to the ground and uh it's pretty much a purpose-built car uh, but we're going to just walk around this thing take a look at it i'm going to show you everything i did with the suspension i built my own custom coilovers for it this year they don't offer coilovers for it and if they do it lowers it like an inch or something like that um so i'm going to get in the shop and i'm going to take the wheels off i'll show you my wheel and tire package uh show you the coilover setup and everything i did to fit it so if anybody wants to go down that road and put coilovers on their car I'll show you all the little uh, pros and cons and the things that I learned. Uh, it took me like a good three months pretty much to get everything dialed in and probably two sets of coilovers realistically to get it like where I wanted it. Uh, it actually drives pretty nice. Um, so yeah, so this is it, 1985. It is a four plus three uh, Doug Nash manual transmission with a tune port 350. Uh, I think it's like a whopping 240 horsepower. Um, the car's only got 68,000 miles. Um, it is, you know, a couple owner, it sat for years or whatever. Um, so I just thought, hey, you know, this would be kind of a cool car to build. No one really is building these right now. They're building C5s and C6s and C7s. And I'm like, you know what, I think they're cool. I'm an 80s guy. This is the car that was on the poster on my wall growing up and flip up headlights, cars are awesome. Uh, so I thought, hey, you know what? This is the car, let's build this thing. So I started my channel after I did most of the work this thing, but we're gonna just backtrack. I'm gonna show you what it looked like when I got it. And I'm gonna show you what I did with the suspension, all that kind of stuff like that. Let's go take a walk around this thing. I'll show you everything I got going on with it. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna give a quick little walk around here. I'm just trying to give you an idea how low this thing is. It's kind of hard to tell in the video. Um, I mean, I guess you can kind of get the idea because the tires are all tucked in the wheel well like that. But I think the roof's probably like 40, 41 inches off the ground, something like that. It's kind of hard to tell. The car has been painted. It's got like a horrible Mako single stage paint job on it. Um, but I am gonna probably have that painted within the year or so. But the body's straight on the thing. Like I said, with the low miles really helped out with the condition of the car. The interior was completely shot when I got it. Just wanna give you a little closer shot there. I mean, it took me a long time just to get that dialed in and there's no rubbing. I mean, the car bottoms out the way the exhaust is set up on it. We'll get underneath here, take a look. You can see that. I mean, maybe it's like a half of an inch off the ground. So smooth roads, you're perfect. Just forget like any kind of speed bump or like pulling into an aggressive parking area. Cause that's just out of the question at this point. But like I said, it's a purpose built car. I just take it out here and there for now. Could always raise it back up if I have to. But yeah, as you can see, everything works on the car too. Power seat, uh, the headlights still work. I had to put the new uh, bulbs in the gauge cluster, but that was uh, not a bad thing, but everything works, all the electronics and stuff like that, because it's kind of known for these things. You know, it's got normal wear on the door panels, all the weather strip is shot on the car, but we're gonna replace that after we get it painted. And there's like a single crack on the dashboard up there, but brand new steering wheel, new leather shift knob, and I'm putting like an aftermarket CD player in it for now. I'm gonna actually have the Bose head unit with a tape player set out and have that repaired just so I can keep the original tape player in there. I know, it's totally an 80s thing, but that's it. And then I redid the seats are brand new, black leather. The car had like preparated, gray leather seats. They were completely falling apart when I got it, just from sitting. So I replaced both of those. Up the hood. Up 
and kind of one of my favorite features of these cars. So when you are working on it, super easy to get to. And there it is. Even though it's only making like 230 or 240 horsepower, the tune port's a really reliable, kind of just good overall engine. I did end up putting an aluminum radiator in it because the original one, as you can believe it, um, was leaking. That is it, but yeah, it's all original. It's got all the, nothing's really been changed on it, which is kind of cool. I mean, for doing a build, like you get somebody else's project, God knows what you're gonna get into with that. So I wanted something kind of original. Some old guy had it just sitting in his garage. You can kind of see my coil over a little bit, but we'll get into that. All right, so I got the car in the shop right now. I just wanted to show you a picture real fast of what the car looked like when I got it. Uh, if you saw the thumbnail, you'll see the side-by-side -side or top and bottom comparison of before and after. Uh, there was 1.2, maybe six, seven months ago. I had black uh, Corvette ZR1 wheels on it with uh, like Toyo tires, the white lettering on it. Uh, I was going for that look for a little bit, uh, but I kind of felt like it was like overdone a little bit. The ZR1 wheels, it just was like you could get the ZR1 package car at that time. And a lot of people would just take those wheels and put them on regular C4s. So I just didn't want to look like every other C4 on the road. Um, so I just wanted to show you what those pictures look like. So we're gonna get this thing jacked up, uh, take the wheels off and then start looking at everything. Okay, so wheels and tires. So these are Alzor wheels. Uh, they're actually uh, for BMW. I got them from uh, Turner Motorsports or ECS Tuning, one of those sites. Uh, so if you're into BMWs, you know those sites and the reputation, they're pretty good. So these are actually a square stand. So they're 18 by nine and a half all the way around, and they got a 35 millimeter offset. Uh, for me, it was kind of hard to, uh, I kind of reverse engineer the factory wheel to kind of get what spec I wanted because I wanted something with a lip. Um, and what I really wanted was more like a, like a BBS uh, basket weave, like a style five wheel. Um, but I just didn't really have any options with, um, you know, the offset that would fit. And I was just worried about, you know, running into all sorts of issues and stuff like that. So I ended up going with these. They're not my like perfect wheel that I really want, but um, it kind of beats for the time being having something custom made, but uh, that may be soon to come. So uh, they are wrapped in hand coat Ventus and I got white lettering on both of them. And the front tires, uh, they're 255 40 ZR18s and then the rear are 275 um, 40 ZR18s too. So, but they got a decent lip to them. Uh, and I'm happy with them for the time being. At first, I wasn't a big fan. They're actually a steel wheel. They look like they have an aluminum center, but um, it's just like a basic steel wheel, but it'll do for now. Um, so I just want to get the stance right and the setup right. So that's what I went with. All right, moving on to the business end of the car. So I have here my setup. So I'll start from the outside. I went with Power Stop uh, cross drilled and slided rotors and pads, um, and they are the original Corvette brake halberds, I just painted those red, and that's all new, and a brand new hub bearings all the way around on the whole car too. So, sneaking in here. So, 84 to I believe 89 have different lower control arms, um, and even the chassis point where this coilover fits in here is wider on those cars. So typically when you look up coilovers for C4 Corvette, it's gonna be like 89 to 96. So there really wasn't any options out there when I started looking around. Um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there for putting coilovers on these cars. So I just, uh, I have a, a chassis uh, suspension background. So I just decided to, you know, go from scratch and start doing my own. So I went with QA1, uh, which you can get from like Jags or Summit Racing or something like that. Uh, I went with their coilovers. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, that this was actually my like second setup. Uh, the first ones I got were uh, just a little bit too long um, and I didn't have the, uh, the install height right so we ended up like bottoming out and running real bad and i didn't get it as low as i wanted so i went back with these and they're, they're actually kind of tiny to fit in here i believe like the 89 and 96 lower control arms are like a little deeper downward so you have a little bit more room to bolt the bottom of the coil over to so as you can see these are installed upside down 
And like even those brackets, you can get them. They're just like shock brackets um, that bolt right up for uh, QA1 components. They have like a shopping list of all sorts of different mounts and stuff, whether you're doing it for this car or another car. Um, and I believe these are like 350 spring rate springs. Um, so, and I have them kind of set in the middle. Um, I think they're like 12 way dampening. I think I have them right at six. And then even the upper mount too is like a basic uh, shock mount that they sell. Um, I was going to go with something beefier and I may steal, but I haven't had any issues with it at all so far. Um, and it's a bit about like nine months or so I've been riding on these. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of perfect for the front here. I ended up having two, uh, you can get different sway bar end links in here. Um, I ended up notching these to clear the coil. Um, and then what I ended up doing too, at some point I ended up stretching these out with like a pair like an adjustable wrench or channel locks or something i can't remember but you can just kind of slowly work this out just a little bit don't get crazy but it gives you enough room for clearance uh for this um you know if you're adjusting your coil over up or down so there it gave me a lot of room because like i said the later cars have a wider perch there and usually you can i think you can actually install them the other way on those cars i could be mistaken though but this is the way i went uh it took me a little bit to get it dialed in um, but that's pretty much it there. So we're going to just go ahead and move to the back and I'll show you everything I did in the back there. Okay. Now what I did with the back was I ended up running a 20 millimeter wheel spacer just to kick the wheel out a little bit closer for the look I was going for. Um, you really don't need it with this, uh, setup wheel with the offset. They bolt right up and there's plenty of clearance that way. Um, so same thing in the back, power stop, cross drill and slotted rotors, power stop pads, painted caliper. Um, I ended up doing all urethane bushings um, in those uh, front control arms there. And then what I ended up doing, so I ended up rebuilding the half shafts, put brand new U-joints in the car. Um, so as you can see, there's my coil over there and that's also installed upside down. Um, I did end up going with Van Steel's lower coil over mount that they sell. Uh, you can make something, but I mean, for the amount of time you'd have to put in to get it right, I ended up just pulling the plug. I think they're around $300 or $350 for the set, but um, it's kind of just worth it just to get those and bolt it right up uh, instead of messing around too much trying to make your own mount. But if you got the time and the equipment to do it, I would say go ahead and try it. Uh, save you some money that way. Um, so there's a couple things here that you can see how tight that spring is in there clearance wise uh you end up having to these have like urethane ends in the coilovers you end up having to shave those down a little bit on either side to fit inside that van steel mount there uh, and then another thing too i'm going to come around to see if you can see it here i ended up having to space out the uh coilover i had to shave down those rubber mounts and make a spacer to push it all the way forward because what i was running into the lower i went with it there was a clearance issue, and it's kind of hard to tell here. With the actual spring running into the axle, Let's see if I can get a better shot. I mean, it's so close, and you really can't see it that well there, but when this thing's compressed, the half shaft just rubs the coil spring. So I ended up having to move that whole thing forward. It's a lot of trial and error just to get this thing to sit in there. Obviously it's not engineered from the factory to sit this low. Um, and you know, there's so many things change the lower you get with this car. Uh, another big thing that I had to do. So if you're familiar with these cars, this is the rear toe adjustment. So this is actually mounted the reverse side. It's mounted upside down here. And you can see this is the channel for that there so that usually goes up in there but what was happening was any of my suspension travel this was just banging right up in the frame here so instead of notching that when i'm doing getting a ball joint reamer and it was thick enough in here and then i reamed the bottom side of that and so i just literally unbolted it turned it around put it up in there that way and mounted it and gave me all the clearance i need there. So that's another point or two that no one really tells you about. There's no information online about that that I've seen anyway doing this. Um, if you're going to go this low, that's the thing. If you're just, you know, lowering it an inch or something like that, there's not much you have to change. But once you get into, uh, you know, this 
low and you know everything changes all your suspension angle changes even your drive line you are going to get a drive line base vibration around 55 miles an hour because the half shafts are up so high um you know the angle is just so severe that you know you just get a little bit of a vibration going off of that that's why i ended up putting you know all new urethane uh bushings um in the control arms i put brand new hub bearings all the way around just to kind of keep everything tight and it did make a difference um but there's you know unfortunately there's a little bit of vibration there but that's that for the setup there so if you're going that route you know upside down you got to make sure you must move that thing forward away from the axle um you know any kind of mount that you can make or if you get these uh that'll push the coil over you know out of the way from the, the uh, factory shock mount just for clearance issues and then like one more time too just to show you that rear steering you know, just so you're not bottoming out and smacking the frame in there. So that's one thing that I found. So that is my suspension setup. And as far as like any modification or grinding or cutting that I had to do, I did very minimal, mainly because I wasn't trying to cut the car up too much just in case I decide to uh, change the power plant, make it fast, lift it up a little bit uh, so it handles and stuff like that. Uh, so the only thing you have to do is grind a little bit of the knuckle to get the van steel um, bracket in there, which isn't the end of the world. Um, you just use your little angle grinder and fit that in there. Uh, that didn't take much time at all. Um, another thing was too, if you can look in here, I switched the bolt and nut around on the lower control arm. So we, the nut comes out further than the head of the bolt. So that doesn't have to hit the spring. And I ended up having to like, just cut a little bit of the bolt down, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, there's a Loctite everything back in. Um, and the front one too is, uh, I don't think I modified that at all. I think that's exactly how it was. You can see my bump stop. I took out the rubber piece that bolts in there and I did end up grinding a little bit out of the bottom just for clearance too. Um, you could cut that whole thing off if you wanted to. Uh, but then, I mean, you're still gonna, you know, hit when it goes a little closer too, but that was enough to, um, you know, give me enough clearance without bottoming me out just while I'm driving. And then right up in here, I just trimmed a little bit out of the wheel well where it was rubbing a little bit. But other than that, you know, I ended up like cambering everything in and just kind of dialing it in so it was close to the wheel well. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much easy. It's all there, all the original stuff is there. Just slightly modified a little bit. So I got the car back on the ground. I just want to do a quick walk around just to show you tire fitment and wheel fitment. It's kind of really hard to tell here, but I mean, it's pretty tight in there. It took a while to get it and I have everything just cambered in just a little bit. I forget what the degrees are offhand, but it's tucked in there nicely. Same with the front. And you can see and it doesn't really even rub. Maybe when the wheels are completely like lock to lock, if you're, you know, turning fast and you hit a little bit of a bump, it'll tap the inside of the uh, hood there. But other than that, there's really no issues, which is kind of nice to be this low and not have any rubbing issues or any problems. All right, so that about does it for today's video. So if you're into C4s or into slam cars, uh, follow us, uh, see what's going on with the rest of the stuff I got lined up for the C4 here. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe, watch what's going on. I'm gonna do a series over there, that blue Corvette in the back too, uh, and a bunch of other things I got going on with some of my other cars too. So thanks for watching.